What makes an employer attractive? Could be a competitive salary and benefits are top of mind for employees, according to a recent survey by human resource solutions company Aranstad. But what's more interesting are the differences in preferences among the various generations of workers. Randstad surveyed close to 3,000 respondents and split the results based on generations X, Y, and Z. Aside from competitive salaries, generation X and Y workers value good work-life balance and non-monetary benefits like flexible work arrangements. For Gen Z, that surpassed having an attractive pay. Career development and progression opportunities are also top of the charts of Gen X and Y. Interestingly, Gen Z employees, on the other hand, said that a pleasant work environment is more important to them than career progression. The survey also found that job security was only of moderate importance across all three generations, with Gen X valuing what more that more than young than those from the younger generations. Now, for more insight on this, we're joined by Jaya Das, Managing Director of Randstad Singapore and Malaysia. Jaya, thank you for joining us uh, this evening. Firstly, a good work-life balance turned out to be one of the key factors considered important by employees across the three generations, and everyone seems to be especially attracted to the ability to have flexible work arrangements. Is there something that's, uh, that's obviously something that hasn't changed over the years, I suppose? No, not quite. Um, we've been running the Randstad Employer Brand Research for nine years now, since 2012. Um, and in 2012, it actually ranked number seven out of the top 10 factors. Uh, going to the following year in 2013, it crept up to the number third place. And then in 2014, it crept up to the second place after salary as, as the most important factor for uh, employees consider choosing uh, their job opportunities or, or work basically in general. And since then, it's been staying in that same uh, second position uh, from 2014. So it's certainly not a, a new factor or a new change. It's an expectation that employees have in general uh, when picking their, their ideal employer, actually. Jaya, the top reason for Generation X employees leaving their companies is this lack uh, of sense of purpose. So what can employers do to better engage this group of workers so that they feel better valued and maintain that sense of purpose? Um, so, Glenda, before I answer that question, I do have to give some context to this data. Uh, the employer brand research was conducted late last year from November up to February when the results were tabulated before COVID became the situation it was. Uh, so a lot of the findings in the data is what you would call in a normal scenario in comparison to the previous years. So we have to take that with a pinch of salt given how things have changed in the last couple of months and where we are headed uh, internationally as well as locally. Um, when it comes to Generation X, I think the most important uh, con conditions in which they face themselves is that they have to make difficult decisions. They're somewhat sandwiched in the middle layers of middle management. And so by that point in your career, it's not just so much about job security or salary or the tangible factors. It becomes what's the intangible that connects you to a job, an employer, and what makes you go above and beyond. Having a sense of purpose or a why, if you put it simply, as to why they're doing the job and what value they bring to their immediate environment, co-workers, uh, and to the organization at large, makes them feel a sense of connection. Now, if this purpose is missing, it's harder to put up with situations or circumstances, particularly in environments like this, where you're not so sure why you are doing it. So that's why that factor remains so important, particularly among Gen X who tend to find themselves in middle management positions or senior middle management. Well, speaking of why, uh, low salary was the main push factor for Gen Y uh, or millennials are leaving their jobs. And that is despite the increase in importance put on work-life balance and career development. Can you help us? sort of understand or rationalize those two? I think without a doubt, in my opinion, if you surveyed people at the moment, job security and financial stability will tend to come up as the top factors uh, given the current circumstances. But we're also looking at a younger generation who face a higher cost of living and a sense of what you call an instant gratification requirement. Uh, they go through work not with the, the mindset of the generations prior to them, which where there is a delayed gratification towards either income promotion or expectations on what they can achieve between their work-life balance and a lifestyle. Now, money is seen as a, a necessary, uh, I would say, tool for them to achieve their desires and also to, to realize them in the current. So money remains a top factor when it comes to that generation. 
Well, let's look at the next generation, and that's Gen Z. They value a pleasant work atmosphere over career progression opportunities mm. and job security. What do you think is the main driving force behind that result? I think you can attribute it to a couple of things, Linda. My personal view is that we live in a, in a life of social media and people have a greater expectation of their environment and what they operate and do every day. Uh, and I also think with the younger generation, they are blessed com in comparison to generation before them where there's greater financial stability. You tend to have a dual income family who's supporting you at home. Paying the bills and putting the roof over your head is not necessarily the number one criteria as to why you go to work. Uh, self-realization, training, opportunities, growth, and also enjoying the experience of work becomes critical. So for them, I think pleasant work atmosphere rates as a, as a reason to be in a job, uh, not just because of the environment, but also colleagues, culture, and all of those factors come into play when you talk about a pleasant work atmosphere. We're in an extraordinary situation now with COVID-19, a lot of retrenchments that we've seen happening as well. How do you sort of see sort of the current job landscape as it is affecting the different generations as they sort of may change their point of view when it comes to work, do you think? Absolutely. I think um, the first thing to note is if you look at it in a, in a general sense of the word, uh, the current economic climate is not a desirable one for sure. I think everybody wants to be able to hold on to their job or at least be able to hold on to their income. So I think without a doubt, um, financial security uh, in the sense that the company that they're working for ought to be financially stable. That's what they want if they were to consider changing jobs or at least continue to have the job security that they hold in their current positions. I think this is a number one criteria regardless of the, the generation that you look at. If you then went one step further, I think if people were to consider changing jobs or employers at this present stage, they would want an additional sense of security about where the company is headed in the future and that their jobs won't be affected because there's a stable financial standing or a plan on how to, they intend to go about the current circumstances or the uncertainty rather. So I think regardless of generation, it's all to do with security at the moment more than anything else. So then how would employers use these findings, you know, to actually help them retain staff, bearing in mind that very often HR policies are usually applied across the board? Hmm. I think if I were to remove the generational uh, elements of it or, or look at it in a more uh, sense of the word on how a company can navigate this period, I think the first question that everybody is answering at the moment is what does the future look like when it comes to flexible working uh, for their employees. I think this current last six months globally has been the biggest experiment the corporate world has ever seen on what it looks like to navigate um, and understanding what the ideal balance is between having to be in the workplace physically and then the definition of what work looks like. Uh, employers have had to shift in their thought processes and employees are beginning to understand what is the way to maintain that balance. If in fact, anything you see going the other way around where people complain maintaining work-life balance while they work at home is difficult because you can't draw the boundaries. So it's opened up a lot of discussions on what the ideal form of work should look like and the definition of it moving forward. So I think policy making in that sense will apply across the board. If anything requires tailoring, it's more to understand what the support structure looks like for the younger generation who expect more engagement and culture at work versus the older generation who are navigating a, a scenario of managing kids as well as elderly parents and a more complex home environment. I think the second issue has got to do with the fact that people still expect to be engaged by an organization with a sense of purpose. More so now than ever, companies are being tested whether they can withstand these current circumstances and how they navigate the next one year uh, to be financially stable and continue contributing from a service or value perspective. If employees are connected to that, either from a training perspective, project management, solutions, or problem solving in general, uh, their connection to a company or wanting to stay with that employer is much, much greater. And I think these two elements are probably critical regardless of the generation or workforce that you manage. Oh, thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, we've been speaking with Jaya Des, Managing Director at Randstad Singapore and Malaysia.